is in heaven, a level in this place. <laughs> this is home for him. Uh, up next, we've, uh, uh, we've got a big bout, a uh, light world trade fight with uh, Darren Hamilton. He hopes to hold on uh, to that Lonsdale belt. He was never expected to win this belt. It's, are you surprised? He came in at, no, he came in at short notice to win it. Five day no, notice against Ashley Thea thing and then was excellent got the win he's moved on from strength to strength there he's now got two notches on that Lonsdale belt so you know he's he's, he's flying and you know do that he's at the age of 35 and you know he's done so well he's turned into a bit of a superstar there Paul <laughs> looking top hat and tails the whole boss is there yeah you know how's he managed to pull this off has it been a secret he's taken a leap out of Spencer's group you know with Darren Hamilton no disrespect to him at all sometimes he'll do something and I think he looks and obviously other times he'll do something and I think he looks well class he's really uh, he's like a, he's, he's a sort of an enigma you know on the night it depends which Hamilton turns up and his last three Lonsdale belt challenge and defenses he's been brilliant okay he's on the way into the ring what about Curtis Woodhouse this man put five thousand pounds himself before he turned pro to win a British title you think he can handle him oh he's, he's nothing but but if he's not confident you know I mean the one thing we know about Woodhouse is he'll go out there he'll give his his very best I mean, he loves it he loves the the crowd the arena the whole thing about it so we know he's going to go out there and perform if he's on his best night you know he pushed Frankie Gavin you know who's now the British and Commonwealth welterweight champion he pushed him all the way so he needs a performance like that to try and become the British champion well we thought Frankie Gavin was his fight his, his all-time fight do you think he can lift that level to this one here um I don't know I'd like to see it it's a fairy tale ending you know Curtis is a good lad It'd be nice to see someone transcend from one sport to the other to, to, to make the transition and to be successful. But I think it's a big ask against Dallas Hamilton tonight, personally. But, you know, that's just my opinion. I think either way, Curtis Woodhouse is challenging for the British title. And that raises fighters' games. And I think it'll raise his game tonight. OK, boys. Thanks a lot. So far, so good. Let's hand back to the MC, John McDonald, for the action. Ladies and gentlemen. We continue with our championship boxing. Please welcome to the ring now, from Driftfield, the troll hunter, Curtis Woodhouse. Yes, man. It's the moment Curtis Woodhouse has dreamed about ever since he turned his back on football to try and become a professional boxer. He promised his father on his deathbed that he would win a British title. He put a big bet on himself that he would win a British title. Now he has his opportunity. And he's produced a bit of a curveball for us this week as well. He's been doing a lot of his training in recent months with Ryan Rhodes up in Rotherham, the Coldwell gym. But for this fight, and they kept this on the wraps, he's been down in London a lot of the time with Adam Booth. And Will Batch bringing in the master strategist be a big difference maker for him tonight. Booth leading the way and there's Adam Booth stepping through the ropes and the entire haymaker entourage is here. You heard David Hayes here, Gary Logan's here, Ryan Rhodes is still very much part of this team as well. And Curtis says we've got our game plan, we have our tactics and he says you'll know about it within the first 30 seconds. And that Jim I think has surprised us all. Yeah, when you hear of a million pound footballer turning pro, you think it's a gimmick, you think it's a little bit of publicity, but no, this fella turned pro with the ambition of becoming British champion. Tonight, his dream is, is inches away. He's going, we know he's going to give his best shot, but we know the character of the man, you know, he wears his heart on his sleeve. I think tonight, I think when he moves up to British title class, he's just a little bit short, and I think that may show itself tonight. He's facing an excellent champion. And by the way, Curtis Woodhouse coming into my way. Darren Hamilton will be coming in to a rapper, a chap called K Nurse, apparently. And now, ladies and gentlemen, time to meet the champion. Oh, Darren Still on my P's and Q's and that's a fat now Yo, 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 my daddy was a dog dude Never really brought through Can't us as a bit rude Yeah, yeah, we never really dig crews I used to fuck from all field to sand shoes I'm more skilled than 10 boots Done a shot around more times than 10
saying truths. Yeah, that was my football era. Came as the soundtrack and the tough not terror. Yo, the cat take the fire, they want to find them. What you call making an entrance. Adrian Broner, eat your heart out. What a special night this for Darren Hamilton as well, the Cinderella man who came in at short notice to win that title. Two successful defences. He owns that belt for keeps if he wins tonight. There's the story. A couple of fellas who've uh, taken very different life paths. But uh, here they are in their 30s, and those paths now converge with the British light welterweight title on the line. And Woodhouse, the busier. Hamilton didn't turn pro till he was 27 and then took two or three years out for personal reasons, which I'm sure we'll go into over the course of the evening. Woodhouse, a much bigger KO percentage. The knock on Hamilton, if there is one, is that he doesn't have an awful lot of punch power, but the bookies couldn't care less about that. They have him four to one on with Woodhouse perhaps attempting 10 to three. Ladies! Gentlemen, Eddie Hearn from Matchroom Sport proudly presents Fighting Prime. 12 rounds of boxing for the British Light Waterweight Championship of the coveted Lord Lonsdale's Challenge Belt. Sponsored by Dapper Bet, the village of Urban Resorts Hall and Scots Menswear. We are live on Sky Sports from the beautiful city of Hull. It's Fight Night Live! All the officials appointed by the British Boxing Board of Control. Steward in charge, Mr. Al Hayes, has appointed timekeeper from Halifax, Colin Roberts. Our three scoring judges. From Doncaster, Michael Alexander. From Fleetwood, Mr. Steve Gray. And from Twickenham, Mr. Marcus McDonald. And when the bell rings and the action begins, the man in the middle and the man in charge is star referee from Doncaster, Mr. Howard Foster. Weighed in at 9 stone, 13 pounds, 13 ounces, 27 fight record, 21 wins, 13 inside the general terms, and just 60 feet. Coming to the ring as the former English lightweight champion and the former Commonwealth title challenger, from Driffield, the Troll Hunter, Curtis. Keep it clean, break straight away when told, and both of you watch your heads in close. Good luck to you both, touch gloves. Well, whose dream comes true tonight? Is it going to be Darren Hamilton taking possession of a Lonsdale belt for keeps? Or will it be Curtis Woodhouse overcoming all the odds and becoming Second British down. champion? Round one. 
this for the British light welterweight title. Woodhouse in the red, and with the entire Hull Ice Arena audience seemingly behind him, Darren Hamilton in the purple with the gold trim. And the one thing everybody connected with Curtis Woodhouse has said is, you've got to take away the Darren Hamilton jab. It is a potent weapon, and it has done for some pretty good boxers over the last couple of years. Well, Woodhouse is the, the puncher of the two, that is for sure. Uh, Hamilton doesn't carry much power whatsoever. So that's good news that uh, Woodhouse can afford to take some chances, and he's going to have to do that because Dan Hamilton has developed a style that is so hard to deal with. It's frustrating, you know, it, it can get an opponent's nerves and cause him to make mistakes. And if you look at his last four opponents, I mean, they are really impressive victories that he's chopped up at domestic level. So Woodhouse is not being allowed to come forward, and I'm sure that'll be a big part of the Hamilton plan. Keep him on the back foot, maybe take some of that power away. You talk about those Darren Hamilton last four opponents it's it's what they've done since which is almost nothing john watson and steve williams they haven't boxed since and uh, an early warning there for woodhouse and another one see it's that awkwardness you think you're out of range but it's the way he leans forward and steps in with the punches his punches are not always of the highest quality hamilton but they're accurate and he doesn't waste too many he really has developed a style Boxing is all about use what you've got, don't worry about what you can't do, make what you can do work, and he's a, a, a perfect example of that. So difficult to deal with. Talk about Steve Williams and John Watson, they've not boxed since Adel Anwar. He's only boxed once and he lost, and Ashley Theophane has had to go over to America to try and reinvent himself with mixed results. Spencer Fearon. The uh, outspoken manager of Darren Hamilton talks about his man stealing opponents' souls. He does have a turn of phrase, but they can back it up with those four guys that have been in with Hamilton. They've done nothing since. Well, Woodhouse showing a little faint, which is the first rule when you're in with awkward customers. Try to draw them into mistakes, draw them into to making the first move. But look how tight the defence of Hamilton is. Hands up. Ooh. Body punch there was uh, borderline to say the very least, and now of course having a little word with Woodhouse. Well, not a lot to, to write home about in the opening round, but probably Hamilton uh, has got the jab home a couple of times. His single left hand is another one. So maybe at the moment, just stealing the opener. So Woodhouse will be looking to get close and unload. That's what he's doing here in the last few seconds of this opening session. David Hay in the house to support Curtis Woodhouse. Woodhouse doing a lot of sparring in South London in the Adam Booth David Hay gym. I don't think he sparred with David, but he did spar with a couple of heavy hitters in there, Nathan Cleverly. And Andy Lee, I mean, that really was going in deep for Curtis Woodhouse. Seconds out, round two. With mixed results, depends on who you uh, listen to. Some people tell you did really well. Others said Curtis got patched up. But uh, that's a big hit as he was in with. Yeah, well, sparring is supposed to put something into you when you're preparing for a fight. You don't want it knocking out. So, I mean, you don't want to be close to a fight sparring with big guys. You want lighter guys for some speed. But everybody has their own way of doing things. Now, Woodhouse had a good look in the opening round of Hamilton, and you, you can't blame him when you know you're facing an awkward foe, and you want to just find out how awkward and try and work out what's going to work. Nice right hand there from Hamilton. Woodhouse had earlier tried to land a left hook and just missed, and Hamilton sharp there. And again. Woodhouse has taken the, 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 the right hand there too easily there. He, he's not dealing with it. You know, he's just pulling his chin down when the punch comes, as though he take it in the forehead, he, he doesn't seem able to avoid it. Well, we're seeing a bit more than just the jab from Darren Hamilton here in the early going. Some of those following right hands are getting home as well. And there's a spoiling when Woodhouse does get close enough maybe to, to do something effectively. It's awkward. And it's difficult to deal with. Woodhouse out of range again. And now working the body inside in a brief little flurry there, Woodhouse. Well, 
wasn't missing badly there, and they enjoyed that in the Woodhouse corner. He can have pause with some of these punches, hammers, and that's what I mean when I say it's not always of the highest quality. The, 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 the right hand is better, you know, he throws it properly, but he can apply him with that jab. Woodhouse looking to get in close, couldn't do it. And he's having a better second round than he did a first round, and then a Hamilton right hand does get through. Yeah, well, he's not allowing uh, Hamilton to dictate in the second round, not, not getting an awful lot home. But uh, Hamilton not enjoying himself quite so much. There's not really much in this round to, to split them, I don't feel. No, I think Woodhouse has done a really nice job of negating some of Hamilton's work here. Yeah, he's been a little bit busy and he's made them miss. So, maybe a lack of quality in this round. A bit more endeavour, that's better from Woodhouse. So, the, the couple of things, uh, times we did open our eyes a bit wider, the thing is, Woodhouse made us do that. Hamilton up very early off his stool once again. Got some words there from Harry Andrews, his trainer, about his right hand. Ten seconds, corners. Yeah, some uh, success from Woodhouse. Not a lot, he split them in the second round. Not an awful lot uh, to write home about. Out. Round three. Well, Harry Andrews just giving Hamilton a bit of a, a reminder about some sloppy right hands. Definitely a better round, that last one from Woodhouse. What a support team he's built around himself for this fight. With Adam Booth, Ryan Rhodes, very much part of the team. Gary Logan, who's such a terrific strength and conditioning guy, the old pro himself, and Mick Williamson, the best cuts man in the business. An awful lot of talent in that corner. And they can give him so much support. But when that bell goes, he's on his own, and this is good stuff, though, from Woodhouse. Yeah, that's a good, solid job. See, this is what I mean, Woodhouse can afford to take chances. I mean, the, the jab, there's not really much snap in that jab. And Hammond lets the right hand go. It's a half-decent punch, there it goes. But his jab, really, you can afford to walk through that. Another good jab yeah, from Woodhouse. Is he out jabbing down Hamilton here? And then working the body in close as well. Good little spell. Well, he's, thro he's throwing a proper jab, I think that's the difference. You know, at times, uh, Hamilton's is a kind of, a don't hit me jab, you know, just to trying to break the concentration. So really, the ha again, better with the right hand, uh, forcing Woodhouse to, to hang on there. Still hanging on. Well, Hamilton, I think, senses that he's shaking Woodhouse up with that earlier right hand. I mean, the right hand's a good weapon, the jab's oh, not... Oh, good body shot, couple of great counters from Woodhouse there. But then Woodhouse slips and Hamilton was on him. Great body work there from Woodhouse. Now a big right hand over the top. Hamilton jab, which has dominated some of his previous fight, is not the big talking point of this one, not so far. Not the training jabs, you know, Woodhouse is getting his home as well. And his is a little bit more spite in it. Looking lively at the moment, Woodhouse. And when there is an opening, Woodhouse is very quick to go for the Hamilton body. Hamilton just missing with a right hand over the top. Woodhouse has, of course, been sparked out in the buzz. Oh, great right hook from Woodhouse. Again, to use your phrase, when the eyebrows are raised, it's from uh, work that Woodhouse is doing. And again, a nice little left this time, and a great straight jab. Picking some really nice shots here, Woodhouse, and Hamilton looks for a response now. Yeah, he's actually forcing Hamilton into a response. I think Hamilton's a type of fighter. You know, if things are under control, he's happy to leave them that way, but well done, Woodhouse. Well, I think of the two, uh, Hamilton is the one who has to look as though he, you know, he really Ten wants to dig in and start uh, producing. 
you know, he's a little bit tentative with his jab. That was just at the slip, but uh, protect yourself at all times. Uh, 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 Darren four. Hamilton reminds him. Well, we're doing a bit of work to the uh, left eyebrow of Dam Darren Hamilton between rounds there as well. I can't see a cut. So it might just have been precautionary, but certainly some kind of damage. Again, oh. left hook, Woodhouse. I think there's a little nick. I didn't see it on the eye, but I saw it on the swab that we're using. So maybe when we get a look at it, it's difficult from the angle here. See, this is what I mean about sometimes the quality of Hamilton's work. You know, it's not top draw. That's better than yeah, that. Right and right better. And then they're telling off for pushing down. Right in front of us, Adam Booth is repeating the same thing over and over again to Curtis Woodhouse. Make him miss, make him miss. Good work again. And there it is, Woodhouse making Hamilton miss. Yeah, Hamilton's the one who's looking a bit frustrating at the moment. And he again. can't get the right hand home. Slipping inside again, Woodhouse. This is as intelligently as we've seen Curtis Woodhouse box. He's been so gung-ho in the past. He admits that himself, but he is really sticking to a game plan here. And again, good work with the left hand. Body shot sinking in there as well. Well, I think Hamilton realises he has to raise the pace. You know, he's been pawing, still pawing with that jab, but he should be snapping it out. Forcing Hamilton to come forward and let's try and land the first punch. Got caught there with a the left hand Woodhouse. That was better and then missed as well. And then it's Hamilton's turn to make Woodhouse miss. And again, in trouble. I mean, Woodhouse did turn away. You know, Woodhouse turned away. It was, it was more Woodhouse's fault. And Hamilton, but I suppose they don't say that Hamilton shouldn't throw the punch. Oh, big cheers there, and I think Hamilton blocked that off, but he missed again. I think Darren Hamilton, quite possibly Harry Andrews and Spencer Beeron and his team, are surprised at how often Hamilton is being made to miss here. Yeah. We expected uh, Woodhouse to have a lot more problems getting the punches from there. He's got a jab home. And it has what looks better as he knows there's not a lot to split him and punches landed. That was better, Hamilton getting the right hand through. It's absorbing stuff, this. We're really enjoying this one. And at ringside, Spencer Oliver is with Ed Robinson. Curtis Woodhouse, a big underdog going in, but Spencer, promising start for him. Yeah, it certainly is. He's, he's holding his own. Darren Hamilton started off very well, looks very awkward, quite tricky, looking for those big right hands over the top, and had a good start, but um, Woodhouse has come back into this one now. He's landing good right hands of his own, and this one really, really looking good. Adam Booth and Gary Logan in the corner keep shouting off the line. They want Curtis to be intelligent about his attacks, and it seems to be working. Yeah, it does. Hamilton's coming in his straight lines, and as I said, he's looking for those straight one-twos. Woodhouse is working around the sides, looking to pick the shots underneath and bring, bringing the hooks over the top. So this is clever stuff from Woodhouse, and, and he's got a great corner there. Hamilton up early and ready again, and... Uh, Getting to the centre of the ring and being pushed back a little bit. And interesting watching the dynamics in the Woodhouse corner. Adam Booth clearly is in charge of the corner, as you'd expect. This is a guy with World Heavyweight Championship experience. Brian Rhodes, just a couple of corners, he's worked as the lead man. So Rhodes deferring to Booth. Hamilton trying to get the, the job working now, he's doubling it now. Swapping jobs there. And there's a look at the old cross arm defence there. Trying to just draw Woodhouse in. See if they can get Woodhouse to revert to tight, but it's a left to the body from Woodhouse. 
I just want to tidy things up. I think there's a danger for Hamilton that the, the judges would like what Woodhouse is doing better. Do you know? You know, he's putting some meat into his attacks, whereas Hamilton's kind of picking there. That was better with the jab there. He's keeping them at bay with that jab, but not, not using it as a weapon. Yeah, it's not the enforcer that we've seen in the past, that's for sure. That's a good right hand from him. Yeah, just caught Woodhouse coming in. Well, this is better from Hamilton. But then Woodhouse tries to find a response. Got a left hook around the back of the guard there, Woodhouse. He came into this one full of confidence, and Dave Coldwell, his manager, who's known him a long, long time, said never known him this confident. Yeah, in the battle of the jabs, it's still, you take one, I'll give you one. It's the right hand is working for Hamilton, but he's not using anything like enough. Super fit now in Hamilton as well. Not need to be in this one. This has got a long, drawn out battle ahead of it. Again, he's made Hamilton miss. Standing off a little bit at the moment, Woodhouse, he's got to get close up. Put punches together, get inside that uh, jab, that frustrating jab. And it's the same mantra from the corner, all of them just saying the same thing over and over again, make him miss. Better fair from Hamilton, but it's another round that's been very technical and tactical. Good boy. You've got to pick the pace up. You've got to pick the pace up, and it's got to be much, much smarter work, all right? It's got to be much, much smarter work now, all right? Good boy. Now, listen, listen. Stop following me. Stop sit down a little bit more, all right? Relax. Start getting into the flow of it, right? Work behind that jab and the double jab, right? Good boy. And listen, look to his body as well, all right? One, two, three, look to his body. All right, good stuff. Come on. Harry Andrews issuing the instructions. So, we're getting off the things you've got. Yeah. A little bit more to him now. More punching with more head movement. Yeah. Line up the shoulder. Then you back him up. Lead to the head. But you've got to bury him downstairs. It's fascinating listening to the two trainers here. Round six. This an absorbing British light welterweight title fight. So much on the line for both men. For Darren Hamilton, victory brings ownership of a Lonsdale belt outright. And we're told an assault potentially on the European crown. And for Curtis Woodhouse, it would be the culmination of what just about everybody called the impossible dream. Great right up and cut there from Hamilton. That rock Woodhouse. Hamilton's corner are asking for more from him, and that's exactly what I'd be doing. You know, he's been too tentative at times. He's got to stamp his authority more. You get the feeling that Woodhouse is giving it what he's got, that Hamilton is holding a little bit back. I mean, I, I won't imagine that he's worried about the 12 rounds, but I just feel Woodhouse is doing the best he can do. Hamilton's the one who needs to give a little bit more. That's more business like that. Yeah, much it, more. And back to what you were saying, Jimmy. Although he's 35, Hamilton, he's, he's a young 35 in boxing terms, turning pro at 27, and has had a, a far less grueling pro career than Curtis Woodhouse. And Woodhouse getting through with the right hand, gets one back in return, though. Woodhouse looking to try and work inside. Well, Hamilton doesn't do much work at all. Well, that was better. Again, Hamilton. And this right hand of Hamilton's is having an effect in this round, and that time it was the left, then he tries the uppercut once again, and Woodhouse is shaken up again to the body this time, then the switch back upstairs. And those uppercuts are ripping through the guard and the defences of Curtis Woodhouse. 
Yeah, well, that's the first time he's dominated a section of the action. Yeah, Hamilton, we'll see, is, is he going to build on that? Or is he going to go pick away again and get his breath back? That was impressive, that shows what he's capable of. And that is answering your coach as well. That's what Harry Andrews called for. Well, he's looking for a breather, though. A good body shot, whipped in the left of the body there. Woodhouse still working it as well. And every time they get in close, that's where Woodhouse really scores. Hamilton trying to get a right-hand counter in there, now drawing Woodhouse in. He wants Woodhouse to go for it, make mistakes so he can pick him off, and Woodhouse so far staying very disciplined. Yeah, well, that was a good burst from Hamilton, but he's taking his breather now, he's trying to pick things up again. Woodhouse driving himself forward, but not quite reaching the target. I think this round has taken a bit out of Dan Hamilton, he's breathing with his mouth open, he's done a lot of work. Well, I think it took a bit out of uh, Curtis Woodhouse as well, he had some uppercuts there, Dave Coldwell, who's Curtis Woodhouse's manager, looking on with some concern, and he's with Ed. Well, Dave Caldwell, very animated at ringside. How do you think your man's getting on? I think he's winning. He's winning. He's totally shocked. His game plan and everything. He's totally shocked Hamilton. He hasn't got a clue what Curtis is doing. You know, everyone expected Curtis to come out like a lunatic, but he's not. He's boxing smart. He's out jabbing Hamilton. You know, nobody expected that. I think he's winning the fight. Who came up with the game plan? Um, that's that, Adam Booth. You know, we, we, we brought on Adam between Adam, Ryan. You know, they put it together, and, and Curtis has done all the work. He's, he's putting a lot of effort, and you can see the fruits of it. All he's got to do is stay focused now. He's got this fight. He's got this British title. You know, all he's got to do is stay focused and not give Darren his right hands. Ten seconds, Thomas. An optimistic Dave Coldwell then. So Curtis Woodhouse doesn't want to eat too many of those right uppercuts for the remainder of this fight. Would you agree with Coldwell that Curtis... Woodhouse is winning this fight? No, what I would say, some of his work is more impressive. I would think it is possible the judges would like his aggression and the fact that he's putting so much into what he's doing, but as Hamilton's holding a little bit back. But Hamilton seems to have the accuracy, especially with the right hand. But a lot of close rounds and full credit to Woodhouse for his efforts so far. Yeah, I've, I've never seen him box this well, Jim, whatever happens from here. That's the control in his box, and you have to give him that. I mean, this is against a really awkward opponent. He's kept his composure, hasn't become frustrated. Throw in first again there. And again, getting the jabs going. See, a nice little feint from Woodhouse too. That's what you have to do with awkward customers. This is good stuff from Woodhouse. And Hamilton fully on the defensive there. Daring him to come in. And then getting the jab going. Woodhouse with the head movement. Negating the effect of that right hand. A little bit wild there from Woodhouse, but the left hook to the body was good. And Hamilton forced onto the back foot, now unloading, but again Woodhouse digging into the midsection and still working it as well. Yeah, but Hamilton been forced to work harder than he would like, I think he likes to control things from long range with the jab, not been allowed to do, this is good stuff from Woodhouse in this round, yeah. big drive from him, I thought they both used up a lot of steam in the previous round, so I mean the seventh is a big round, who's going to come out to take charge so far is Woodhouse. Hamilton at the moment looking for a little breather again. Maybe this is a fair bit tougher than Hamilton expected. I think it's a lot tougher. That was better, left hand getting through. And you have to say it's down to Woodhouse and the execution so far of this game plan. It's making it highly competitive. And I talked to more than one real boxing expert this week who said, I can't see with the best win in the world how Curtis Woodhouse wins this. Well, this is a good round he's having at the moment. He's enjoying himself here. But I think those same experts probably didn't expect to see this game plan either. Continuing to just jab away, match jab with jab. 
Woodhouse, they're not all getting through, but they're keeping Hamilton's focus. No, this has been a good round for Woodhouse. As I say, they both used up a fair bit of steam in the previous round, so someone had to be prepared to step up to the plate. I think it was Woodhouse. And it was Hamilton lunging in as the bell went there that put him in the opposite corner. He had the long walk Start back. You got, yeah, you've got to start, start working. working. More work. Sit down behind that jab. Sit down behind that jab. That's lovely. That's all right. I've got it. I've got it. I mean, okay, listen. Sit down on that right hand. Drop it in. All right. Now listen, you're finding the one two, but you're saying they're looking at him after you've worked. One two, look at his body after. The left hook goes to the body. Showing it, man. You're showing it. You know the fight's close, right? Okay. How fresh do you feel? Okay. Look at me. He's sharp. Ten, Ten seconds, seconds, corners. Well, again, Hamilton ready to so go early. Hurt his body. Don't sit at the end of the game. Let's go. Yeah. And they're saying once again, hurt his body. This is one of those, pick what you like. Just uh, looking unofficially, Jim, as we look at your scorecard, you've got Hamilton with his nose in front here. Pulls yeah, but a lot, a lot of the rounds I've liked what Woodhouse has done better, but he's just not found the target enough. Well, Jim, Paul Smith agrees with your assessment. Glenn has them dead level. Spencer Oliver has Woodhouse two up. So, whatever you like. The bottom line is, this one's close, way too close to call. Cool. The Michael Alexander, Steve Grant, Marcus McDonald liking here. Well, I just feel that Woodhouse has proven that he really wants to win this title. You know, at times, uh, I feel Hamilton could put more into it, he's capable of more. But he's picking away, just trying to, 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 to steal points at times. Well, Curtis Woodhouse long ago won the respect of the boxing fraternity. I think the uh, split decision lost to Frankie Gavin erased that. Certainly Frankie got his respect. He earned, he earned Frankie's respect that night. And then that barn burner with Dale Miles where he got sparked out. Well, what a fight that was. And he's got Hamilton's respect here as well. Hamilton was doing a little bit better there. He was coming forward again. But back comes Woodhouse. Hamilton looking to just goad him in. And Howard Foster just letting him work it, work it out there. And now Woodhouse looking to try and bully Hamilton, but is that a mistake? Is he going to leave himself open? Uh, good punches there from Hamilton. Exactly. But Woodhouse undeterred, still marching forward, but he's a bit more thought in what he's doing. He's leaving himself open as he comes forward here. Just tighten things up. Keep coming forward, but tighten things up. Good work there from Hamilton. Yeah, again, first in. He's falling short at the moment. Woodhouse being picked off. Swing and a miss from Hamilton. Who, as you said earlier, Jim, not known as a big puncher. That's a good left hook from yeah, Woodhouse. Right. Can you build on that? Yeah, shook Hamilton and then a right hand straight through as well. But Hamilton took that well. That was a big punch. A good uppercut back from Hamilton. Yeah, oh, this is good. This is really, really good. Catching fire now. This has been a terrific fight. Good right hand there, Hamilton. And again, going over the top. That's the right hand that's worked all the way through. Why hasn't he stuck with it? Great round. Both fellas having success. You know that, right? Million time now. Come here. Million time now. Take that. Take the wall with Spence. Take the wall with Spence. Spencer, take the fucking water. Big up. And apologies yeah, for the language. Right, listen. That's what you've got to do. That pace. Don't stand in front of him and take shots. Move. All right, side to side. Everything behind that jab. No, well, I've been feeling that. Hamilton had to come up with something a little better. Well, he did it for spells in that round, bringing the right hand in, which really the success rate with the right hand has been pretty good. But it's, I'm wondering why we haven't seen more of it. 
with some good, clean, Don't solid punches Thomas. landed from both men in that round. But I was impressed by Hamilton. Hamilton Second to get up really early, and Woodhouse nine. breathing heavily on that stool as we go into round nine. The British light welterweight title at stake. A couple of early jabs there from Hamilton as he looks to impose himself here. Right hand comes back from Woodhouse. On the right hand there from Hamilton. He's having a bit more success the longer this fight goes on. As Woodhouse starts to slow a little bit. Well, uh, if Woodhouse volunteers to go into the back foot, then I think it's a lost cause. He really has to be coming forward to win this title. And he was knocked back a little bit too easily there. So experience over the 12 rounds, will that be crucial here? Trying to come forward again, Woodhouse. It's not reaching with the punch, he's not getting there. And again, Hamilton showing him a row, an array of defences, good straight jab from Woodhouse. And again, Woodhouse though, out of range, and again, but there gets in close, left to the body. a little burst now and then he takes a few breathers here and there and if Woodhouse can capitalize on that see Woodhouse isn't getting close enough when Hamilton decides just to back off it's kind of smart stuff from Hamilton at the moment he's just trying to keep Woodhouse out of range well, that was really nice from Hamilton just blocked off the lead shot and hit him with the counters it's not dramatic stuff from from Hamilton, but it's a little bit effective with the jab, just annoying Woodhouse not allowing him to set anything up. And Woodhouse with the eye-catching stuff again, but Hamilton responds. It really is good stuff. <laughs> Left hook to the body, great shot from Woodhouse. He's putting so much into this. But can he subdue Hamilton? Can he get on top of him consistently? And it's so hard with this awkward man from London. Just can't get close enough to get the power shots on target. Woodhouse, terrific effort again. Missing a little bit wildly there. title fight we've got Tommy Coyle in action no, no. and also this fella here Luke Campbell slowly but surely stepping his way up through the rankings actually saw the telephone box that's painted gold today went for a little stroll around a hole Jim he's got his telephone box for winning the uh, Olympic gold medal last year you don't you don't have one of them do you now that I could do with the money out of his, I'm going to go and <laughs> see if I can read it. Nah, nobody deserves it any more than Luke. Fantastic amateur, great ambassador for his country and his city. Great to see things going so well for him. Yes, everything's gone very well for him. And he steps up now against Scott Moises, but that's after this. Get off first. <laughs> Let's go. And not long to go now because the rounds are ticking away. Hamilton, the champion, Woodhouse, the challenger. I wonder if Woodhouse is smartly doing little in the first minute of the rounds and then coming on strong. I don't know, because he, he surrendered, uh, you know, the front foot boxing here is just onto the back foot. So is it kind of smart stuff? I wonder. Through there from Hamilton, not everything, but 
flow in twos and threes when he feels confident. And Woodhouse, as you say, in this opening minute of this round, not offering very much at all. Now he's looking a little bit flat-footed in the early stages here. I wonder if it was part of the plan. No, not so sure. Uh, missing, not getting in close enough to get the range. Walking onto the jab. He's allowing Hamilton to dictate the pace at the moment, uh, which is no good. There haven't been too many rounds in this one where you can say one is just outclassing the other, but this is one that is so far looking very good for Darren Hamilton. Yeah, well, Gets I'm a right hand through there, the Woodhouse, sorry, Jim. I think he's nicking rounds. And I'm scoring rounds from it. Sometimes I'm not all that impressed with what he's done, but he's landed more punches with the jab, the awkward style and the popping right hand. You know, whereas Woodhouse seems to put more into it, but just not quite finding the range. Still feel that Hamilton is capable of producing a little bit better, although maybe I'm not giving enough credit to Woodhouse when I say that. Well, he's opening up here with the body attacks, Woodhouse. And we dormant for the first 90 seconds of this round. I wonder if part of the Adam Booth game plan, though, was that at some point, Hamilton would be slowed and hurt by these body shots. There's not been any evidence of that at all so far. Well, it took a little while to get started in this round, uh, Woodhouse. So he's trying to pick up the pace now. Nice again from Woodhouse, but I think he's been outworked in this round. Woodhouse now would like to take a little bit of a breather. They both put so much into this, particularly Woodhouse. Nice body shot from him. How the Foster didn't like it. He wanted it up a little bit, right on the, uh, the belt line. But he's landed a lot of good body shots, Curtis Woodhouse. And at no point has you felt, have you felt Darren Hamilton is feeling that. You've been deadly serious with my phone this away. You have been. You really got to work here. You, you have really got to work it tight. You've got to pick up. You've got to pick up. You've got to you really work here. It's tight. Right. It is really well, tight. Let's go. You have got to go. Let's go back to the ringside and let's talk to Paul Smith. Paul, how are you seeing this one? I mean, are you seeing it like the rest of us that you can make a case for both men? Um, possibly not, but the rounds are really close. Listen, it's all how you score a fight, and I'm scoring it for Daniel Hamilton at the minute. I think he's just doing the cuter work inside. I think Woodhouse is wasting a lot of shots and expending shit is a lot more than Hamilton, but the cuteness and the arm shots from Hamilton, the little sneaky slice, few shots inside, are stealing the fall, but it's a great fight, and Woodhouse has certainly proven a lot of a lot of people wrong before the fight, who said he wouldn't be involved in it. This is a, a very good fight, and depending on how you score them, it's close. Absolutely right. And did you hear Darren Hamilton's trainer, Harry Andrews, saying, listen, you're throwing this away, and then they just sort of took it off a little bit. They said, no, you're winning it, but it's close. And I think that was a very, very intelligent bit of coaching from Harry Andrews, because it's going to need a big finish here, because, as everybody said, you can make cases both ways. Look well, at that. Look well, at that. Well, Hamilton, sorry, no, I've heard it. This is better from him. This is the right hand that's been hidden away for so much of the fight. I mean, I have him four points up, I just think over the last little spell, it would house it, it just hasn't found the range, putting a lot into it, but just not, you know, get, getting the product. I haven't always enjoyed what Hamlet's been doing, but he's been poking away with the jab, bringing the right hand in, the uppercut now and again. I agree with what Paul says, it's what you like in a lot of these rounds. Exactly. And that may be what tightens things uh, towards Woodhouse because I really admire what he's put into this. Well, I go back to that fight we saw a couple of weeks ago in Cardiff, Gavin Reese and Gary Buckland, which was so close and could have gone either way. And two of the judges saw it in Buckland's favour was every single journalist present, all 25 of them, scored it for Gavin Reese. It's what you like. So I think Harry Andrews is absolutely spot on, telling Hamilton to just go out and dominate these rounds. And now. The punches are flowing from Hamilton. Well, I've always felt he has more to give. Is he going to start giving that now? Oh, oh good oh, uppercut, wicked beauty. Uppercut. Wicked. Woodhouse is caught by a few of those earlier, and now Woodhouse is just throwing caution to the wind here and saying, come on, let's go and have a tear-up. This is the old Curtis Woodhouse. And now he's settled down again. Working the body once again. Back on track, back on message. 
And that was a naughty one, and uh, he could be in trouble there. But up to that point, the accuracy was coming from Hamilton. He was digging that right hand in again. I think maybe he's been saving something all the way through this. Hamilton picking up the pace a bit now, but I think he'd be well advised to do that. He's corner are screaming for it. I would be too. Big right hand over the top. Woodhouse followed up with a left hand. He really has dug in. And whatever happens here, Curtis Woodhouse has proved himself a championship level fighter. Super stuff. Look at that from Woodhouse. And then the body shots. And he's backing Hamilton up, but again, Hamilton looking controlled. Woodhouse has poured an awful lot into that assault. And still, Hamilton unfazed. That took a lot out of Curtis Woodhouse. And he needs that bell. But did that big attack at the end of the round there allow Curtis Woodhouse to nick it? Well, we saw Hamilton pour out, which has been lacking from a lot of his performance. And he poured it out there. Woodhouse certainly come back as a beautiful uppercut there, but uh, Woodhouse took it well. And at this stage in it, in a, such a tough fight, those punches can drain you. But he's taken it, coming forward. Huge effort at the end of the round. They made a little bit too little too late. Oh, it's been a terrific night, this. A really, really good fight. And for everybody who said Curtis Woodhouse wasn't a championship-level boxer, you can forget that. And for everybody who said Darren Hamilton's a boring fighter, forget that as well. This has been terrific. Really good stuff. And this crowd really behind Woodhouse as they've been right from the start. Could that be a factor as well in close rounds? With a crowd roaring everything Woodhouse does again. Hamilton looking sharp and fast. But Woodhouse catching him with a straight left. And then a big right hand. And Hamilton backing up this time. That's shaking him up. He felt that one. That one caught him high. Well, Woodhouse putting it all on the line here. That impossible dream, how close is he to achieving it? But Hamilton looking to rip it away from him and take that belt for keeps. What a battle. Now, this is a huge effort in the last round from Curtis Woodhouse. Huge punches. Both corners so animated. Decent job there defensively from Woodhouse. Hamilton, a lot of effort, pretty much in vain. Now, Hamilton with blood trickling from the nose, getting an uppercut in. Woodhouse trying to land a left hook. Hamilton saw it coming. But he took that right hand, Hamilton. This is a terrific effort from Woodhouse. He's just pouring everything he has out here. It's outstanding. This is commendable. Absolutely terrific. outstanding. Terrific. You cannot say enough about Curtis Woodhouse. And you've got to admire Darren Hamilton, the way he stuck to what he, I'm sure, has found a much harder the night than he was expecting. Another solid right hand from Woodhouse. And Hamilton is feeling this now. Has Woodhouse got time for a spectacular ending here? There's almost a minute left, Nick. He's hooked him twice in this round with right hands. And Mark Hardy, he needs the knockout. And he's going for it. Forty odd seconds left. Again, Woodhouse trying to defend. Hamilton looking to get that uppercut through. Down inside the last 30 seconds now. Two desperately tired men.
just an outstanding battle between two men who just want it so badly for very different reasons. And you just have to take your hat off to both of them. We've had some terrific fights for the British title over the last few years. And this goes on to the list. That was tremendous. Absolutely outstanding from both men. And after all the talk and the banter and the Twitter war of words, lots of respect. And Curtis Woodhouse being hugged by his team. Ryan Rhodes is there. They all think he's won it. Meanwhile, the kidology, David Hay, applauding two Warriors. Kel Brook to his right as well. Woodhouse celebrates as if he's won it. But win or lose, that is the best Curtis Woodhouse we have ever seen in a boxing ring. And it really does come down to Jim. So we've said it time and time again. What do you like? Yeah, but I mean, the, the, the stuff that uh, Dan Hamilton does that you're not all that impressed with, you know, flicking with the jab, pulling a, a bit with it, the, you know, not used as a weapon, not proper punches. But if they're point scoring punches, then you, you know, you, you have to score the points. Woodhouse put up a tremendous effort. There were enough rounds that could go either way to make a case for both men here. I have Hamilton winning it. I think he's landed all over the 12 rounds, he's landed more punches. But, I mean, what a terrific last round that was from Woodhouse. And what a story it would be if the judges saw it for Woodhouse. It's one of those fights. I'm giving it to Hamilton, but uh, they both put so much into this, and actually Woodhouse put so much into it. If you got the rub of the green, I wouldn't begrudge him, but that was a terrific fight from start to finish. It was non-stop. OK, some of the early action was a little bit untidy, but each man just seemed to refuse to allow the other man to have the last word. As I say, enough close rounds that you can see it how you like. And I'm looking forward to see what the judges made of it. And it was just a lovely scene there while watching these replays, Jim. The two boxers who've been so hostile towards each other verbally during the build-up to this one, they just linked arms, walked round all four corners of the ring and just saluted the crowd. That was the kind of fight it was. A fight where respect has been earned on both sides, but it now comes down to three judges to make a dream and break a dream. Michael Alexander, Steve Gray, Marcus McDonnell. How have those three seen it? Let's find out. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 fantastic rounds of boxing, referee Howard Foster has insisted that you show your appreciation to two absolute warriors. And now, ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing is the moment we will be waiting for, and we have a split there decision. We're not surprised. Judge Michael Alexander scores the contest 116 113 in favor of Hamilton. Steve Gray scores the contest 116 115 in favor of Woodhouse. And finally, and finally, Judge Marcus McDonnell scores a contest 116, 114 in favor of. And the new! It's Curtis Woodhouse! Curtis. The impossible oh. dream just came no. true! Just more than he did. Woodhouse gave it everything he had. I still fought over the piece. The Hamill had done enough to hang on to his title and won the Lonsdale belt. They'll have to come back and try and do that another time. But let's just enjoy the moment. What a ride it has been for Curtis Woodhouse. Tremendous. That 
Martin in its way is one of the most emotional nights we've seen in a British boxing ring. Curtis Woodhouse, who was laughed at when he turned professional. They thought he was a joke. Well, the joke won everybody over, fight by fight. And now he's put everything into this. He's brought in Adam Booth. He's brought in that team. They asked him to perform a game plan to a game plan. He's executed that game plan. And he's seen all those efforts result in him becoming British champion. What an extraordinary story and what a moment for the one-time footballer who fell out of love with football. He decided to pursue his dreams, and those dreams just came true tonight. Well, Nick, when you're judging a fight, you go with what you like better, and it doesn't surprise me that the judges liked what Woodhouse was doing a lot of the time, because he could not have put any more into that. Every ounce that he had, look at the last round he produced. He was just so determined to become British champion. He has been since he turned pro, and congratulations to him, terrific. And, and the bet that you talked about earlier, Jim, the fact the story goes, he bet £5,000 on himself before he even threw a punch that he'd one day become British champion. Somebody took that bet. Somebody better pay out. But you know what? I suspect after all the blood, sweat and tears, Curtis Woodhouse might value that belt more than any bet coming in. That's what he wanted. That's what he worked for. That's what he promised his father on his dad's deathbed. And he's got it. Well, he said this is his last fight. I wonder if this will change his mind. I don't know. I will want to retire as undefeated British champion. I don't know. Nothing that this young man does will surprise us. But what a terrific achievement. Phenomenal. Unbelievable. Let's just say that again. Curtis Woodhouse, British champion. And I don't know if Dave Coldwell, his manager in the ring there, just got something in his eye or whether he's wiping away a tear. What an extraordinary night we've seen here. It'll be interesting to see what Hamilton and his camp make of it. But the night belongs to Curtis Woodhouse. And that big gamble of his, bringing in all that expertise, it paid off. It paid off massively. Darren Hamilton leaving the ring as well. As well you have to say, Nick, I don't think the Hamilton's corner were ever all that happy with him. All the way through, they wanted more from him. I feel he was capable of more, and he's paid the price for that. Well, this is an interview we're all dying to hear. Ed, take it away. Well, Curtis, against all odds, you've an incredible journey to get here. Try and sum up, try and put into words what it means to you winning that Lonsdale belt. I, I honestly can't believe it. When I was 10 years old, they told me I'd never be a professional footballer, everyone laughed at me. And when I said I was going to be a professional boxer, everyone laughed again, and I told everyone, I had the audacity to tell everyone I'd be British champion. And I can't, honestly can't believe this has happened. I'd like to thank Darren for giving me the opportunity. He gave me one hell of a fight in there, but I just want to take one second to dedicate this, this to the man that made me anything in life was possible. I'd like to dedicate this to my late dad. I miss him and I'll see him real soon. <laughs> you promised you'd win it for him, didn't you? Yeah. I promised him I'd win it. And every promise my dad ever made me, he kept. And I wanted to make sure that I kept my promise to him. And I did it tonight. Congratulations. Darren, was it a fair verdict? Pardon? Was it a fair verdict? Pardon who? Was it a fair verdict? Do you know what, yeah? It could have went either way. I reckon, you know, obviously, you know, the advantage of being at home. But still, it was a close fight. It was a close fight. Uh, as a champion, I think I should have dominated a lot more. So. There was a lot of spite between you in the build-up. Yeah. Did he win your respect in the fight? He definitely did, yeah. He definitely did. And you'll come again? Most definitely, man. I'm a bouncy boy. I'll be back. Definitely. Curtis, beforehand, you said you were going to retire, win or lose. After that performance, Liar! are you reconsidering? Liar! Listen, listen, how can I ever top what, I've, what has happened tonight? This will, this will never get better for me. I, I, I want to bow as champion, um, and I aim to stick to it. Tell us about your bet as well beforehand, a long time ago. There's a rumour going around... I can neither confirm nor deny the rumour, but there's a rumour going around that I had a £5,000 bet on myself to win the British title at 50 to 1. So the drinks are on me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> How will you celebrate? I'll celebrate probably with a Chinese and an early night, because this man next to me just put me through hell in there. What a champion, what a tough man, and 
Darren will come again and that's uh, listen I've fought some really really good guys tonight that's the hardest fight I've had in my life so respect to Darren like he said that could have gone either way they said in my corner at the 10th round this is a three round fight you know it was that close so could have gone Darren's way could have gone my way tonight was my night you've got a great team around you as well Adam Booth was here important factor in the win listen I've got the dream team here you put these lot together, Ryan Rose, Adam Booth, Dave Caldwell, Guy Logan, I've got Bobby. You put these together, there ain't one thing these lot don't know about boxing. This is the dream team. That is it for you, you're not going to box again. I'm not going to box again. I might do a little bit of sparring with Ryan and help Ryan out with some of the young kids, but that's me done. Thank you. I've had a wonderful time and thanks for everything all the boxing world's given me over these years. Well done, congratulations. Johnny, what an incredible story. Footballer to the British champion. It's amazing, he's unbelievable. That kid just nearly had me in tears. I was bubbling there a little <laughs> bit. Um, amazing. What a story, Glenn. It's a brilliant, brilliant story. It's a great, great fight. You know, there was a bit of everything in there. But I mean, I, I thought Hamilton was getting the, the more effective punches. But Woodhouse, you know, he wanted it more. His punches were the more eye catching punches. And I think with the hometown crowd really cheering him on, it brought him to another level. And I mean, to up his game that far was tremendous. Paul, tell me, did you expect this kind of performance from this man here? Not, not at all. I expected every bit of effort and every bit of heart that he showed because that's, a, that's what he is, that's who he is, and that's how he fights. But I thought Hamilton would be too cute, too sneaky with the little sneaky shots, which he, which he throws a lot, and a bit too clever and a bit too big and strong. I was proved wrong on every, on every sense. I scored the fight by one round to Hamilton, so I can't go back on my verdict. But I said also, I hope Woodhouse wins it because I've never seen that amount of grit and determination in the past, in the recent no, what, times. What, what he showed, win the British title. What he showed was, was passion. You know, in boxing, is often won on, on pure emotion, pure passion. He obviously, he promised his dying father. You know, that goes a long way when, you, when you've made a promise like that. You, you reach deeper than you'll ever reach before. And, you know, he's now retired because he'll never top that. That was his Everest. He's done the impossible, and he's won a British title. So you just got to say congratulations, Curtis. Well done. Curtis says apparently the drink's on him for this room. He can't come We'll take, we'll take him on that. <laughs> all, all deny this place was set on fire with this fight. It was unbelievable. And, and if you want to start getting into the technicalities of it all, the sheer work rate and, and the pace that Woodhouse set, Hamilton couldn't keep him off him. To be, uh, you, you mentioned it yourself, to keep someone like him off, you've got to have a dig. Hamilton didn't have that to keep it off him, and Woodhouse was able to keep pushing forward, keep pushing forward through the pain barrier, through the tiredness, what he had, through the fatigue. And for me, he, he took the last two, three rounds, and for me, he evened up it, but that's what stole it on the judges' cards, have a, and to, every credit to him. To have a 12th round like that, Woodhouse was just, you know, monumental. He just won it so much. He dragged everything up. You know, he went to... to no expense spared to try and get the right people around him because he'd made this dream, he'd made this pact with his father and he was going to make sure he give himself the best possible chance of winning it. I feel like we've been in the ring ourselves. <laughs> Two lives.